like to call this regular meeting of the Raton City Commission to order. Can we have a roll call, please? Mayor Michael Scotto. Hunt, present. Mayor Pro Tem Schuster. Present. Commissioner Chatterley. Present. Commissioner Chavis. Present. Commissioner Giacomo. Present. All right, could you all please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you all for showing up tonight. We have a couple of announcements. One is the notice of cancellation. The August 28, 2018 commission meeting will be canceled due to a conflict with the New Mexico Municipal League Annual Conference, which is in Roswell that week. So our next regular commission meeting will be Tuesday, September 11th, 2018, 6 p.m. here in the chambers. This time we will take comments from the general public. Anyone wishing to address the comment, may, uh, the commission may do so now. And we have Ms. Ferry. Good evening, uh, Mayor, Commissioners, Michael Ann. I just wanted to come up and on behalf of Raton Main Street, just thank you all so much for all of your involvement last week in our uh, summer quarterly here. Everybody had a great time and it was so cool that all of you were there and you participated with us and I just can't thank you enough. So, thanks. Thank, thank you. you. It was a great, great turnout. Yeah, great yeah. event. Great, great. <coughs> Anyone else? Okay, we'll move on to the business part of the meeting. Item 6A, approval of the July 24th, 2018 regular commission meeting minutes. Minutes were in your packets. Should that time to... I had one small correction, item B. I just noticed it was missing who made the motion. And I don't know who it was. I didn't write it down for once. Uh, I'll have it in my notes. Okay. Uh, which one was it? I'm sorry. Item 7B. Seven. Seven sorry, I should have... Oh, okay. I didn't uh, catch that either. We will uh, get that from my notes and correct that. So we just have the second. Okay, sorry about that. But they're wonderful as usual. You do such a good job. I didn't catch that. Any other corrections, additions, deletions? Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion to approve as amended. As amended. Any further discussion? All in favor, vote by the sign of aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries, thank you. Item B, final, this is our final public hearing on our City of Raton Infrastructure Capital Improvement Plan, lovingly known as our ICIP. If there's anyone here that uh, would like to speak on any items, we'll listen to you now. But Mr. Barry, turn it over to you. Mayor and Commission, um, we uh, are would have probably tried to adopt this at our next meeting, but because of the conflict with the Municipal League, uh, we are asking for the final public input tonight, and then on the next item, consideration of adoption of the infrastructure capital improvement plan in order to have it submitted uh, timely which the uh, date for submission is September 4th I believe and then one of the critical things about uh, meeting that submission requirement uh, will be uh, in regard to uh, capital outlay requests that ultimately we would submit to the legislature that's one place that the ICIP is important. Uh, it can be important in other funding requests as well. So um, we uh, have made our recommendations there to the commission, but public input uh, is very important. And so uh, we received some limited public input. I know that from the uh, Center for Sustainable Community, they pointed out they would like to see uh, electric vehicle charging stations added uh, at the multimodal and I know we've talked to a private vendor that's uh, looked at adding that in Raton uh, that is input that we have received um, and um, I think that we have someone present here tonight mayor that would also uh, like to address the commission as far as some input so I'll hold up uh, there and uh, turn it over to you mayor. All right thank you so we do have someone 
you just state your name and let us know what you need. Good evening. Thanks for letting me be here tonight. Uh, my name is Emma Green. I'm the Colfax County Coordinator for Healthy Kids, Healthy Communities. It's a program through the Department of Health. And so my scope of work is healthy eating and active living in schools and communities in Colfax County. And um, I've kind of tapped in on a project that I believe a lot of people around here have been talking about for quite a few years, which is connecting Climax Canyon to Sugar Eat State Park. And um, it is in the county's comprehensive plan, specifically stated Climax to Sugar Eat connection. I've also looked at the 2003 City of Raton comprehensive plan and their supportive language in uh, sections economic development as well as land use, but most importantly under the parks and recreation section. Um, in that section, the implementation actions says the Trails Initiative states by 2005, the city of Raton shall work with a committee comprised of park staff, neighborhood representatives, and other interested in trails development on identifying potential trail corridors. By 2006, funding for development of trails and or acquisitions of rights of way should be pursued through the federal and state governments. In addition, the city should work with Colfax County in this effort. Um, I have brought for everyone the draft of the project feasibility form that I'm turning in tomorrow for TAP funding. Is it okay if I turn sure, it? Oh, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> Thank you. I'm kind of new in these meetings. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I'll put one map on this end. Thank you. Thank you. And one map on this end. And so basically what we're talking about is just a half a mile stretch of paved shoulders on New Mexico 72, north of Allen's Alley, to connect um, Allen's Alley with uh, New Mexico 526 to get folks up to Sugar Eat. And so I apologize, I only have two maps, and I have a black and white printer, so I got my markers out for y'all. Um, but basically, we have been able to find alternate routes to keep people off of 72 for the most part. There is uh, two different spots that folks have to just pop out on 72 for just a minute. Um, I don't know how you guys feel, but I don't feel very comfortable on 72 on a bike, and I probably wouldn't take any of my kiddos out there and any of that. So I just started looking at back roads, and so basically from Climax, if you go under the underpass and then cross I-25 um, on the overpass on North 1st, you can cut over on Stevens and kind of go the back way um, around Bartlett Mesa Road, and then you can kind of zigzag through that um, kind of subdivision area to get over to Allen's Alley. And so basically we're just looking at a half a mile of paved shoulders uh, north of Allen's Alley on 72 to connect with 526. So I've been working with Heather Sandoval from NMDOT as, where, as well as uh, Vincent Sewell from EPCOG and Dennis Salazar from uh, NERTVO. Maybe I have those two. Uh, backwards. And uh, Mary Lou Kern has actually uh, put this project on the ICIP. They have the same deadlines as you all do. And um, basically where we're at right now is we just need a 14.56% match. And um, you'll see the numbers in front of you on the project feasibility form. I'm hoping they're slightly inflated. I caught an error that I'm checking on with Heather Sandoval today. Um, and so that 14.5% match is it's hefty. Um, and so uh, I'm looking to, I guess the ask here is maybe the city of Raton as well as New Mexico State Park, as well as maybe the you know, tourism, uh, economic development, uh, lodgers tax, um, local government road fund, any sort of piecing together that 14.5% match. It doesn't just have to be one contributor and no contribution is too small and definitely the reward will be great for everyone. I do believe that it will bring a lot of economic opportunity to our town when we can start bringing um, folks in here for different events that are surrounding biking activities. And um, you know, we have uh, Down and Dirty and Masters of Mountain, and I think those are huge successes. And I think we can start including um, a larger range of demographics if we're keeping folks off of 72 just as recreational. I think the Down and Dirty and the Master of the Mountains works really well because it's an event and we probably have um, you know, stop gaps in place to keep it safe. But as far as just letting folks just go out and just ride and walk and even equestrian use, 
I think there's a large potential for this. So I just wanted to bring it to your attention in case um, any portion of that match could go on the ICIP before it's finalized. Um, definitely understand that's a big ask, but I knew that I had to throw my hat into the ring. The, um, this application is only every two years, and so if I wasn't to turn in this project feasibility form tomorrow, we would have to wait two years to do it again. So, any questions or comments? So I guess my question would be initially, all you're asking right now is for us to include this project on our ICIP. Yeah, and it would even just be a portion of the match that would go on your ICIP because the entire project is already on the county's ICIP. The entire project total cost that you see there is going on the county's ICIP. And you you realize if we put it on the ICP, it doesn't mean we're actually committed oh, to Oh, for project. sure. And that's why I thought maybe it was an easy ask, too, because if it's on there and we find some money somewhere, then at least it's already on the ICIP. So. Mr. Yeah. Murray, do you have any comments on this? Well, uh, you know, we have uh, done some work on the ICIP today. Uh, internally, staff is as uh, um, worked on prioritization and we're going to talk about our recommendations to you. Uh, I certainly don't have any concerns with putting it on the ICIP. What I would point out to the Commission is it's a proposed project that is outside the municipal boundaries but it is in our utility service area so uh, we uh, do spend capital improvement money on certain infrastructure there basically the water system and the electric power system so uh, I'm not sure where that leaves us from that perspective as far as uh, providing match to to a trails project but certainly I like the project it's uh, for a tourism standpoint mm -hmm. I think our best bet is uh, development uh, in Sugar Canyon area and marketing that and certainly uh, you know at the meeting today people were talking about uh, mountain bike uh, around the Mandala Center area. I know it's it's uh, big in other uh, mountainous communities. I'd, I'd like to see the project. Uh, so I would definitely support the project. We have to address that, the fact that it's outside sure. of our uh, municipal area. Uh, but uh, like I say, I, I think we, we probably get uh, we get a review of that. We, we do uh, spend money on utility systems out there. So. I think the benefit would really greatly benefit Raptone specifically, like you guys yep. said, the, the tourism. And there is a potential, so this is kind of, um, I'm throwing my hat in the ring for this half a mile. But, you know, I've been really getting creative about, you know, maybe a larger route to, um, you know, maybe using old Raptone Pass to get out to the Colorado trails. They're doing amazing work in Colorado with their trail system. Um, you know, and then even on the other side, the east side of Lake Maloya, um, there's a doctor in town, I can't remember his name, um, has donated 500 acres to Sugar Eat. And so there's a potential to kind of, you know, connect both sides like that, and this would really create the whole loop. So um, those are a little further down the road, but I mention it because I do think that if we have an event where we bring people in town for two or three days, they're staying overnight, they're buying coffee, they're eating at our restaurants, they're staying, you know, at the sure. new Airbnb I just created. <laughs> so. And so, you know, Raton Pass, a good part of that is outside the city limits, but it's city-owned property uh, around uh, Beloya, a lot of that city-owned property. Now, I think we just... Uh, ask the question here mayor and get a, uh, an answer I can I can arrange for that uh, but to uh, you know place a uh, place it on our ICIP a, 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 an item there I don't see any problem with that any other comments questions for Ms. Green or Mr. Mayor well, I think it uh, I think it should I think we should go ahead and put it on the on the plan Scott and I have talked several times on this, and it's uh, it's an up and coming thing to trail riding, mm -hmm. and the, and these mountain bike trail and the mountain uh, four wheel trails, and uh, you know rumors have it of what's going to go on over on the Trinidad side of the path. So uh, I think that we ought to you know jump in. Uh, really do. Yeah. The other comments. This is. Uh, may, may I get a copy of what you put out into my box? 
you. Yes, ma'am. We will make sure you get one. Thank you. And then let, I just want to clarify, she's talking about um, 72 to Climax Canyon, right? The other way, Lindy. Oh. Climax to 72, but actually just a half mile stretch, Lindy, is what the, uh, the money's going to be for. But it would be okay. connecting all of that. Right. Okay. Very good. And I did just want to make clear, too, that uh, Superintendent Robert McMagiver of uh, Sugar Eat State Park is actually asking his team in Santa Fe if they're willing to contribute any of this match, because it definitely serves in the interest of sure. Sugar Eat. Um, the estimate is 100,000 visitors per year at Sugar Eat, and you all probably know that Climax Canyon is now a nationally awarded and recognized trail, so I think we could really do a lot for Raton. Absolutely. Well, I want to thank you for all the work you've done on this. It's really Absolutely. impressive. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I'm a little new to this arena, so it's kind of turned into a game. Like, I'm going to figure this out. <laughs> so, okay. Thank you all. I appreciate you your time. Thank you. thank you. As this is the public hearing part of the ICIP process, thank you for your time. Anyone else wish to address the commission at this time? All right. We'll move on to item C then. Deliberate and act on resolution 2018-51. Adopting the fiscal year 2020-2024 City of Raton Infrastructure Capital Improvement <coughs> Plan. Mr. Berry. Mayor, Commission, in your packet you have uh, some uh, work, which is a summary of the ICIP, and then you have some details of, I believe, our top five projects. And um, this, uh, how we uh, submit this is uh, the resolutions you have in front of you, but also they have a database that the data would be input, and it is not easy to do that. Uh, Mr. Phillips is here. Uh, he has done this for us over a number of years. It can be kind of challenging to enter this data and keep it up uh, just because their database is a little difficult to use. Um, I'm going to call uh, Jason up to the microphone to talk about uh, really the, 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 the top five um, you know, what he has in this. Let's talk about, uh, you know, what kind of prioritization we put on the trails project, uh, where we would uh, put that in. And what you have in front of you is a recommendation, I think, uh, that included discussion with uh, all the department heads, myself, Jason, and utilities. And so, uh, I'm I'm going to talk about the priorities here a little bit, but uh, first I'm going to ask Mr. Phillips to talk about uh, what he's got listed here, what we anticipate, and our recommendation to you as far as these priorities. Uh, Mayor Commission, uh, to begin with, uh, changes in the ICIP generally reflect things that have been funded in the past, changes in priorities, and their guidance is, is generally that you have probably about 20 projects. We have quite a bit more. Uh, it's not really intended to be a master plan document as it is a, a guidance for funding, specific funding programs that you actually have a realistic expectation of getting money through these. And it's uh, designed to give the legislatures kind of a one-stop look at what your needs are and how they could possibly fund those. You'll see some of the items that, if you remember from last year, have kind of moved down. That usually reflects that we have found money elsewhere or through capital outlay. So our, our top priorities are bread and butter, not real stylistic projects, streets, drainage, uh, some east side street improvements, great blocks as we seek our funding is staying up high on the priority list. And then you see some high dollar water projects that are up there. Uh, things like the transfer station moved down some. Public Works Equipment Purchases, if you uh, remember, uh, we were funded for $200,000 in Public Works Equipment, so that moves down at least on, on our in-house priority list. An uh, ambulance is something that we've found to fund elsewhere. And then some projects jump into the ICAIP that were out higher due to funding availability. Uh, the Airport Apron Project was originally slated to be a 2023 project but due to some stimulus type funds that came available, it made sense to move it into this year. Uh, some items like the Senior Center, they have their own ICIP, but they're still required to be part of our ICIP since we own the building. So they're in there, but their funding mechanisms are a little different where 
they prioritize their needs, where they fall on our list isn't really as critical because they have a special pool of funding available. And uh, some of the water stuff, you know, generally we get together to form priorities. We talk to all department heads. We gather input from the community and uh, we talk to the utilities. So there's some RPS projects. They'll, they won't be capital outlay type projects, but they're in here for what they're doing in the future. Uh, Mr. Campbell and I spoke at length about his funding opportunities and his highest priorities. So you can see number five and number six both come from RWW and their uh, fairly large ask that we're expecting to at least get incremental funding on in the next couple of years. As far as priorities go, the, when we go to pass this resolution, I mean, you're free to discuss and, and change the numbers. I'll jump in the database and, and do whatever we want. And uh, to add a project for Ms. Green, right now in, in FY 2020, which is where this ICIP begins, we currently have 19 projects, so I just need a little guidance on to where we thought that would be slated. The one thing I would ask is that it, it remain lower than number four, as that is a TAP application that she is talking about pursuing, and as you're aware, in our agenda we have a TAP application of our own sponsored by the City of Raton, which in my mind I would think we would have to prioritize higher as it being our own project. Will her TAP uh, project interfere at all with, uh, with uh, her applying for a TAP project? We are applying for a TAP project and I have a resolution tonight requesting 20% of $600,000 for great blocks. They will be competing applications. Um, not to, to say that to discourage your support of, of that application as well. It's a uh, we're going to be competing against a lot of projects throughout the state, so it's it's just another wrinkle in the thing. But she, uh, we would be competing against that application. Well, in, in in my opinion, in all honesty, I think the five projects we have at the top of the list are of utmost priority for Raton. So it would, I feel, would definitely be below those five anyway. I would say. In fact, uh, the top seven, uh, yeah. um, we should be below that, in my opinion. Yeah. <clears throat> Any other comments, questions for Mr. Phillips? I definitely agree that it should, if that should be a lower priority towards closer to the end of 2020, maybe, just because we have so many other things. I mean, I still think it's a wonderful thing. Sure. The Mayor and Commission, I'll uh, just give you a, probably a little more of uh, our thoughts in putting this recommendation uh, forward to you. So, um, as is typical in, in most years, we've listed street improvements and street reconstruction as our number one priority. And as we've said in past years, you can uh, throw a dart at the map of the uh, city and it'll land on a street that needs street work. And so, there everywhere, even streets that we've worked on in recent years, there are maintenance items like crack ceiling or uh, other work that, that needs to take place. Uh, what I would like to see prioritized at, at this juncture is that we look at, uh, continue with our downtown uh, avenues and our business district, and I'd like to uh, suggest to you that uh, when come legislative appropriation time, we prioritize a project that would uh, reconstruct two blocks of Park Avenue from 1st Street to 3rd Street. That's in the area of the post office and then uh, that block, uh, uh, the old Sun West Bank building. Uh, and then uh, one block of Cook Avenue we haven't worked on between 2nd and 3rd. That's uh, in front of the city library. Uh, but you can see that we have uh, uh, really identified we're going to work on city streets every year uh, so I would make that uh, something of a priority and then I would tell you that with this uh, uh, donation of millings that came from the interstate we have something of a plan to add a new element to uh, street improvements and that would be uh, to use the millings and um, so I don't know if, if you all had noticed a process that the DOT had done recently, but uh, they took millings that were on the side of I-25, they had a contractor crush those to size, 
and then they ran those millings through a pug mill that's basically a cold process where you add new asphalt uh, to that and then you can use it in a variety of ways you can use it for patching material uh, cold mix essentially or you can uh, uh, resurface a roadway with that and we would look at laying that down with a lay down machine to resurface streets typically streets that don't have curb and gutter because we would lay it in at a relatively thick lift and uh, uh, over whatever base is there. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of those streets, a lot of great candidate streets. That would be part of our, uh, not exclusively, but part of our street program that with the uh, <coughs> buildings that we have, uh, we could fix streets in that manner for many years to come. Additionally, uh, in screening that material, we would screen a side stream of chips. We would obtain uh, ma aggregate material for chip sealing out of that uh, pile. And then we do a third thing. We would use that in the uh, pothole patching machine that we're looking at uh, funding with our capital outlay from last year. I would tell you that currently we don't have a funding agreement in place, even though it's been about six months since uh, the legislature acted on that, or the governor signed that bill. Uh, so we're waiting for a funding agreement to move forward with the equipment. Um, drainage, you see drainage in here, and we have two things on drainage. One is the original town site uh, storm drainage system. We did some work a couple of years ago, you might remember, uh, Park <coughs> and Cook uh, really contributed to eliminating funding and uh, flooding, I mean, in some of the uh, businesses we have close to 2nd Street. Uh, we would look at continuing that and other streets in the original town site. Um, east side street improvements, we're looking at uh, streets in the area of uh, Sugar Eat, East Cook, uh, avenues there that are in exceptionally poor condition, possibly as a, uh, a CDBG project. The last public hearing that we had, a lot of those residents came forward and pointed out to us that uh, those streets are in bad condition. Uh, so, and, and asked us to consider that as a possible CDBG application. Uh, so we'll take a look at that. Again, another challenging uh, funding process there. And then uh, Jason had mentioned great blocks. So we have great blocks in there. We are looking, we are partially funded on that, uh, less than 50%, so we're pursuing money, and as Jason said, through the Transportation Alternative Program, Jason will attend the NERCO meeting tomorrow, turn in some documents that are necessary, uh, the, the uh, PFF that you just saw in the Trails Project, uh, and go forward with an application for TAP funding for uh, the Great Blocks Project. Uh, lastly, we put on there uh, number five, uh, Lake Maloya Dam safety improvements. Um, there we are primarily looking at improvements to uh, the primary spillway. Uh, we could do additional improvements as far as instrumentation on the dam or rehabilitation of the outlet works. Those are primarily things that we're looking at uh, on that. And I'll just mention it because it's something that we've talked about uh, uh, through the year. At, on sixth place there is a, a Cimarron filtration facility. We're really looking at upgrading uh, that system that brings water from the Cimarron River to our filter plant in Raton. Uh, pumps are included in that, uh, telemetry, uh, control systems, things that uh, go back to the early 1980s and the construction of that system. Uh, that's something that I think the public spoke very loudly on the ballot issue that they want a reliable water system and see that as an asset and so uh, that ranks very highly from where we're at. We would anticipate maybe looking at uh, possibly USDA funding and again that combination of grant funding and loan funding through a USDA program. And I'll hold it there, Mayor. Alrighty, thank you. Comments, questions from Mr. Barry? <coughs> I guess then what we would need is a suggestion as to where we would like to put Ms. Green's project. <coughs> and Mayor, if I could offer a suggestion to you, I would put it in at uh, 7.5 between the Transfer Station Recycle Center and City Public Works Equipment Purchases. 7.5. Yeah. <laughs> Jason will make it all look good. <laughs> okay. Does that all work, work for you all? That's good for me. It's fine, yeah. Okay.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jason. All right, at this time, then, I would entertain a motion to approve the resolution 2018-51 with the amendment of Ms. Green's project to uh, item 7.5. I'll make that motion, I see. I'll second it. We have a motion and a second to adopt resolution 2018-51. Is there any further discussion? All in favor, vote by the sign of aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Okay, item D, deliberate and act on events. Raton Main Street, Gate City Music Festival street closures and Raton Homecoming parades, parade street closures. Mr. Berg? Uh, Mayor Commission, um, in regard to the Gate City Music Festival, um, we have reviewed this. It's an event that we've done for a couple of years now, so we're very familiar uh, with that. Uh, the staff has recommended the street closure, as you have in front of you, and of course, the uh, executive director is present and answering any questions you might have on the event. But I think you all are familiar with the event as well. Great event for that, so. Absolutely. I find everything's in order on both applications. <coughs> Entertain a motion. Make a motion. I'll second it. We have a motion to approve the events, the Raton Main Street Gate City Music Festival Street Closure and the Raton Home Coming Parade Street Closures. Is there any further discussion? All in favor, vote by the sign of aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. I mean, deliberate and act on resolution 2018-52, requesting revision to the August 17th, 2018 deadline for application submitted for a horse race racing license to the New Mexico Racing Commission. Mr. Barry. Mayor Commission, um, uh, we have drafted this and brought this to you for uh, your consideration and, and upon your approval, we'll submit this to the New Mexico Racing Commission. And it's... Uh, basically points out that the deadline to submit an application uh, for the horse racing license of August 17th, which is Friday by the way, is a very short deadline. If you were an applicant for this license, uh, number one, it's a lengthy application. Uh, a, a lot of detailed information is required, uh, but also the applicant wants to perform due diligence to make sure that they see it as a viable project. And so some, several of the applicants have stated to me that this is not adequate time to get in an application. Uh, but, uh, Mayor, I would tell you that a couple other applicants have stated that they have enough time and they will submit an application by the deadline. Uh, so I, I don't know what happens on Friday, but um, that's information that has been relayed to me. So um, I think that the short deadline uh, generally uh, precludes some Raton applicants from being a part of this process, though. So we bring this resolution to you for your consideration. I would state that I wrote a letter earlier to the Horse Racing Commission asking for a 90-day extension, and that was unanimously rejected by the Commission. We appreciate your work on this, Mr. Barry. And as, as you know, this is something that uh, we've been striving to bring to Raton for a number of years. Um, there's a lot of reasons to have heartburn over this. You know, it's set idle for eight years, and all of a sudden now there's a big push to get it through. It just doesn't smell right on so many levels. But I appreciate Mr. Barry doing this. Um, and I, I completely concur. I mean, to rush through that application process in basically two weeks, that's a tough job. That's a tough job. But I heartily support this. <laughs> it has so. my support as well, and I would like to echo that and thank Mr. Barry for all he's done you know, to get these letters of intent and get, get this all organized in such a short time frame. And I definitely support this resolution. So we'll take that as a motion. I'll make a motion to right. uh, approve resolution 2018-52. Hey, we have a motion from Commissioner Chatterley and a second from Mayor Pro Tem Schuster to adopt resolution 2018-52. Is there any further discussion? All in favor, vote by the sign of aye. 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 
Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Berry. Item F, deliberate and act on resolution 2018-53, support for bringing horse racing back to Raton, New Mexico. Mr. Berry. Mayor Commission, um, I feel that uh, a racetrack in Raton would be not only beneficial to uh, uh, northeastern New Mexico, but really to the horse racing industry in, in New Mexico. Um, I think to put it in some other places may actually be detrimental to the horse racing industry and uh, Rat Tone would uh, lose out. This is uh, to uh, for the commission to express uh, if you uh, support this, this is not support of any particular application. It simply states that we feel uh, that Rat Tone is the right application uh, for the uh, license. And I think we would uh, state to the uh, Racing Commission, Gaming Commission, and the administration that uh, we would work with any party that uh, would be selected to construct the facility. We just are stating that Raton would be the correct place to to uh, construct the facility. Absolutely. And I would agree with everything Mr. Berry says, everything that's in this resolution. I'll make a motion to approve resolution 2018-53, support for bringing rat horse race back to Rato, New Mexico. I'll second. We have a motion and a second to adopt resolution 2018-53. Is there any further discussion? Mayor, I would just add that uh, I, I believe a number of uh, local communities and regional communities or public agencies uh, will also express their support uh, for uh, bringing this license to Raton. I believe that a number of uh, horse racing entities throughout the, the region, uh, including the abutting states, will also support this. So uh, with this resolution, we look for uh, a pretty extensive report or support for a Raton application. Absolutely. Any other discussion? All in favor, vote by the sound of aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Item G, deliberate and act on resolution 2018-54, approving transportation alternatives program cap application and related documents. Mr. Berry. Uh, Mayor Commission, this relates to the TAP application that we talked about earlier and uh, um, funding of the remaining portion of the Great Blocks project. As we talked about, uh, we have funding to begin uh, the process and we're asking for bids currently on the construction of phase one of TAP and of course we don't want to go very long before we have a way to finish the project. So uh, this looks like the best uh, option to myself and I think the Public Works Director to submit this application for the Transportation Alternatives Program, uh, which we will uh, follow up on at the NERCPO meeting tomorrow. It does uh, state that uh, um, we will ask for $600,000 in project funds and that we would provide a 20% match. And we would do that out of our uh, gasoline tax. Is there any comments or questions for Mr. Berry? I'll make a motion to accept resolution 2018-54, approving the TAP application and documents. A second. I have a motion and a second to adopt resolution 2018-54. Is there any further discussion? All in favor, vote by the sign of aye. 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 Opposed? Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Item H, deliberate and act on resolution 2018-55, intergovernmental service agreement between the city of Raton and the village of Maxwell for capital outlay fiscal agency services. Mr. Berry. Mayor Commission, um, we do have Ms. Sean Jeffries present from representing the village of Maxwell in regard to this agreement. Um, under this agreement, well, let's back up here. The, uh, the village of Maxwell is planning to uh, design, construct, and equip water system improvements uh, for Maxwell. Uh, they do have 
about $864,000 in funding, which uh, I believe came through uh, a capital outlay action some years ago and is administered by the New Mexico Environment Department. Uh, the village of Maxwell would be required to have a fiscal agent, and they have requested that the city of Raton act as the fiscal agent for the construction of this project. Um, now, I think that generally the project would consist of uh, um, replacing some wells that have given the village of Maxwell problems in the last few years. Uh, and then I think there would be some distribution system improvements as well. Uh, we have talked about this uh, uh, with staff. Uh, our recommendation is uh, in favor of acting as uh, the fiscal agent for this project. Um, I can answer any questions you have. Michael Ann can answer any questions, and Ms. Jeffries is available to uh, give you additional information. Any questions for anyone? My main concern was how it would affect our staff, but I've been assured that that would be a problem, and I, I like to see us helping another community and have more regional focus, so that's nice. Any other questions? You're getting off easy, Sean. <laughs> I'll make a motion to approve Resolution 2018-55 Intergovernmental Service Agreements between the City of Raton and the Village of Maxwell for Capital Outlay Physical Agency Services. Do we need to also I, add Scott? And also, Don, if you could add Scott as To the, include our City Manager, yeah. Scott Berry, as Senatorial uh, Authority. I'll second that. Okay, we have a motion and a second to adopt Resolution 2018-55 with the amendment that Mr. Berry is the signatory, has a signatory authority on all agreements. Is there any further discussion? Mike Lanco, we have a roll call vote on this one, please. Maybe just a second. Sure. Up here. Uh, who was the second to Lindy. 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 Mayor Pro Tem Schuster. Okay. Commissioner Giacomo? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Schuster? Yes. Commissioner Chatterley? Yes. Commissioner Chavez? Yes. And Mayor Sagada? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. You bet. Good luck. <laughs> Item I, deliberate and act on renewal of lease agreement for National Guard facility at Raton Municipal Airport. Between the City of Raton and L3 DOS Aviation, Mr. Murray. Mayor Commission, this is in regard to the uh, National Guard Readiness Center located at Raton Municipal Airport. As uh, just a reminder, um, the National, the, Ar the State Armory Board had stated that they would uh, provide the building to the city of Raton with no money changing hands, and that would happen as soon as they remediated a lead contamination issue they had in their indoor shooting range. Um, I can tell you that that transfer has not happened to date because after several years of cleaning that, uh, they consistently fail to pass the, the test that says they're clean. And so, as a matter of fact, Mayor, the, uh, uh, the team from the National Guard was present today at the facility, and they are cleaning that room for the fifth time. And uh, they'll be there two more days, and they tell me that they are very optimistic that they're going to meet the, the levels required and wrap this up. Uh, uh, I've attended numerous uh, Armory Board meetings where the State Armory Board has stated as soon as they get that remediation complete, uh, they will deed the building to the city of Raton, but currently it is owned by the State Armory Board. Now, I would state that the building is owned by the State Armory Board. The land underneath has always been owned by the city of Raton, and that is that, that relationship is described in a uh, lease agreement that uh, goes back many years. Uh, so we are confident that we'll get that exchange done. But in the meantime, uh, uh, DOS Aviation is operating a flight school uh, in the building. Since we talked last, DOS Aviation was acquired by a company named L3. They are now L3 DOS Aviation. Um, I am very optimistic and looking forward to the expansion of the flight school as we go along. Um, and I would recommend to you that you uh, approve the lease again for the period of a year, and that will help L3 DOS uh, uh, grow the flight school, which 
it's not unanticipated. It uh, takes several years to do that, uh, but uh, I do look forward to the growth of this uh, flight school and it be having an impact, positive impact for the city of Bradtown. Any comments or questions for Mr. Barry? Mr. Barry, I believe it was about a year ago this time you and I attended a meeting down in Albuquerque with the National Guard and they assured us then that that cleaning would pass. So we're feeling better for this one. Well, they they have made the effort and uh, I, I, I can tell you the people that uh, come up to clean, they, they try pretty hard, but they just have a few hot spots in there and they're talking about extremely low levels of lead, extremely low levels that are specific to uh, the U.S. government. Uh, it, would, it would be fine for any other type of facility, but I, I would state that we definitely want them to complete this remediation before we accept the building. Uh, so it's taken some time, but uh, they, they will get that done. All right. Well, I will move to approve the renewal of the lease agreement for the National Guard facility in the Raton Municipal Airport between City of Raton and L3 Dawes Aviation. Thank you. Second. What? We have a motion and a second to renew the lease agreement of the National Guard facility between Raton Municipal Airport, the City of Raton, and L3 Dawes Aviation. Any other discussion? All in favor, vote by the sign of aye. 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 Motion carries, thank you. Madam J, deliberate and act on introduction of an ordinance authorizing the execution and delivery of a credit agreement and note by and between the city of Raton, New Mexico and CoBank ACB in, that, in an amount not to exceed $1,754,000 for improvements to the city's joint utility system and paying the cost of delivery of the credit agreement. Mr. Barry? Mayor Commission, this is an uh, ordinance dealing with the interim financing. It's something that we, uh, for specifically for improvements to the Raton filtration uh, plant facility, is something that we've talked about now over the last six months. Uh, the general manager of Raton Waterworks, Mr. Dan Campbell, got all dressed up for this presentation. <laughs> So I'm going to let him come up and, and talk about it some. Looking dapper as usual. Uh, Mayor and Commissioners, uh, as you've seen, we've been going through this several days, <laughs> <laughs> several months. This is actually the interim financing for the USDA Rural Development Loan. This is actually for the $1.7 million portion, the loan portion. Of course, it does not address the $800,000 grant portion. We've actually already had two water board and commission resolutions that have improved on this. This was actually been turned into the Office of General Counsel as a draft document to where the goal is that we can proceed to bid. This will be about a four week bid process, which four to six weeks, so it would probably be the end of September at the soonest that we would open bids. This is just an introduction. As you can see on the documents, it would be on there for consideration. And, uh, and actually a public hearing on the 11th. Since you don't have your next meeting, it could be published, but within that would be the public hearing and to take action on it. This is just the interim financing. What happens is because this project with rural development funding is over 500,000, this will actually be just for the portion of construction, similar to a construction loan if you were building a home or something else. Then we would go to a bond action, which this commission has already seen that document, that would actually go to a closing at that point. This is actually has a three-year limit. We're anticipating this project has a one-year completion date with its final, uh, completely with all steps within 18 months. So this document is just that first step for interim financing, which is done through CoBank. Uh, I would recommend approval to where we can try to move forward with this project. Uh, it, it is a large project that we'll be doing at the water treatment plant. Uh, we've worked closely. The design is completed. As soon as we get the, the approval to go out to bid, we will have it out there because it's a complex problem, uh, project. There's a lot of equipment that will be replaced up there. But the biggest problem is we've always dealt with at the water treatment plant. We will have to maintain making water at the same time we do a construction project. Uh, we've been through that with the operators and the engineers when we actually have a 
a pre-bid meeting and then a pre-construction meeting. Of course, that will be stressed and it actually is in the documents is the critical nature of the short-term shutdowns that can happen at the facility as we continue to make water. Much of this project will actually take place in either the spring, fall type winter when we're at our low flows. Okay. Thank you, Dan. Any comments for Mr. Barry, Mr. Campbell? Just to understand the process, so we would approve this tonight, but then there would be a hearing on the 11th. Is that what happens? We're approving the introduction of the okay. award. This is just an introduction. Okay. I'll make a motion <coughs> to um, approve the introduction of an ordinance authorizing the execution and delivery of a credit agreement and note by and between the city of Red Tone, New Mexico, and Co Bank. Pretty specific. <laughs> there you go. Close enough. I'll second it. We have a motion and a second to introduce the ordinance. Is there any further comments? I think he looks pretty dapper. He does, <laughs> doesn't he? <laughs> and I want to thank you for your brevity. That was good. <laughs> You've heard it enough already from the last year. <laughs> See no other discussion. Uh, Michael Ann, can we have a roll call vote, please? Commissioner Chatterley? Yes. Commissioner Giacomo? Yes. Commissioner Chavez? Yes. Mayor Sagata? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Schuster? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Item K, City Manager's Report. Mr. Berry. Thank you, Mayor and Commission. Uh, today I attended a meeting of RAIN. That's the group in town that uh, advocates for uh, systems to address problems the community has with uh, substance abuse. Uh, behavioral health and mental health. Uh, at the present at that meeting was Congressman Ben Ray Lujan, uh, and we had a discussion of those issues in the community of Rat Town, and, and we also had a uh, something that was a surprise to me. Uh, the primary contractor for provision of services for uh, behavioral health and substance abuse is Tri County, and, and they announced that they would end their service on the last day of August of 2018. Uh, that's going to leave a tremendous uh, uh, shortcoming in bringing those services to our uh, community. And so the people that are present at the meeting uh, talked about ways that they could uh, really react to what is shaping up to be a crisis for the community. And I don't think there's a clear cut answer to how we're going to address this or make sure those services are in place. Uh, but you do have a lot of engaged uh, people and agencies uh, in Raton. And I think that, uh, that those people will rally to find a solution to this. And of course, there, there needs to be a short term solution to make sure the services are available uh, after September 1st, and then we need to talk about long-term solutions which, or uh, uh, treatment options that we have been talking about. So there's two elements to this. However, it was a productive discussion. It's a difficult problem. Um, a couple of you were present there as, as well and, and uh, heard the discussion. Uh, to move on, I plan on attending as well as several of you, the New Mexico Municipal League annual conference that will be held in Roswell. I'll be there on August 29th and uh, 30th. Some of you may be there on some additional dates as well. Um, on August 21st, we will have a meeting in Raton that will include uh, a number of parties that are concerned with the Southwest Chief Rail Service. I plan to be at the meeting in a I believe Mary will be present at that meeting. Um, Amtrak will be present. State DOTs, uh, Tiger Grant applicants will be present. Um, and I think uh, uh, BNSF will be present as well. And we'll talk about where we're at on this uh, Southwest Chief uh, Rail Service. I believe that the issue of positive train control might still be an issue out there, but we did get some positive news from the uh, Senate as far as a funding bill that will really help as far as maintaining Southwest Chief Service. But uh, the issue is not completely solved. We'll continue to work on that and I'll report back to the Commission as we go. Um, on a related uh, issue, I've had discussions with 
uh, Amtrak, as far as the depot agreements, I think those discussions were very positive. They sent us a couple of documents. I believe I provided that some time back uh, to you, and we had a lot of comments on those agreements. I think that in the discussion, we worked through most of those comments. Uh, we have some uh, uh, optimism about uh, bringing those agreements back to you with a recommendation for approval. Um, right now, there are some discussions between the parties in regard to insurance, and basically what we have in the con in the agreements for insurance are construction related, and if there's construction, uh, it would be typical insurance that we require of our contractor, such as builder's risk, and we would name uh, City of Raton and Amtrak as additional insured. Uh, then we have property insurance and liability insurance. So the insurance folks are working on that now, uh, but I think we can uh, work through that and get the agreements back to you. Um, we did hold a pre-construction meeting with the contractor uh, for the hospital drive con con reconstruction project. We anticipate that construction will start around the 1st of September. Uh, we do like to point out to everybody this is a, a busy roadway and with the, the disturbance from construction, uh, traffic is going to be frustrating for people trying to get to the hospital, uh, the medical park, or some of the businesses in the area. And then getting out of there will probably be even a little more frustrating. So we would ask for people's patience. Uh, we would ask that people really be cautious, drive slow, and definitely pay attention to the traffic control and the signage that we have out there. Um, I have one last thing, Mayor. Uh, we've had communications with uh, Federal Aviation uh, as a follow-up to your action in regard to the bids for the Tal Taxiway Alpha project. You'll recall that we uh, took bids for the full construction of Taxiway Alpha, did not have adequate funding. Uh, we were short by about $300,000. Uh, Federal Aviation said that they would fully fund uh, that amount and gave us authorization to uh, proceed with uh, uh, construction of the taxiway uh, alpha project. We are in the process of submitting a, a grant application to FAA because that comes after the bid is awarded. And uh, what that would mean to us is our share of the construction amount, uh, which is 5%, would go to about $65,000. That is general fund monies. Uh, in addition, I've submitted an application to uh, Federal Aviation under their supplemental uh, funding authorization for reconstruction of our apron at the airport. I've submitted an application for a million dollars. That would be 100% FAA money. So we'll see how that turns out. That's all I have, Mayor. Thank you. Any comments from the rest of our commissioners? Commissioner Chatterley? Commissioner Giacomo? No. Commissioner Chavez? Of course. Of course. <laughs> what do you got? Uh, I attended that meeting today with uh, Congressman Luhan, and during the meeting he did say that him and Heinrich and Udall, they all really are putting pressure on the Amtrak to, uh, to ensure that uh, also stated he didn't believe anybody was going to ride a bus from Dodge City to <laughs> Lamy. So, but I think that we continue to put the pressure on the Amtrak that it will benefit us all. Absolutely. Mayor Pro Tem Schuster, any comments? No. Right. I thank you for um, everything. You bet. <laughs> I would just state that Mr. Barry and I will be attending the Racing Commission meeting on the 23rd in Rueda, so we'll try to behave. <laughs> any, <laughs> any other comments? This meeting is adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>